This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A veteran educator of 40 years and principal of 10 years received a very high honor today. The institution she once led was renamed in her honor. Education officials joined Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie in the formal ceremony that highlighted the rich legacy of the school and saw the announcement of an expansion program. Clint Watson reports. It is now my esteemed privilege to officially rename the Oaksfield Primary School to the Eva Hilton Primary School. The nearly half a century old school with some 633 students will now be named after its fourth principal, Eva Hilton. The school is not only embracing the rich legacy of its patron and her name, but it will also welcome another long and by some accounts overdue gift. One, the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, was pleased to announce. As a result of the school's excellence and the need for further growth, the Ministry of Education will invest this year in the expansion of this school. There is no doubt that the school is well deserving of this expansion. Plans already underway and the architects have been working diligently to create blueprints for this project so we can get underway during the summer. Prime Minister the Honorable Perry Christie described the work and legacy of Eva Hilton as one that should serve as a model to other educators and an appreciation to students who will attend the institution. Mrs. Eva Hilton and the educators of her generation had one mission and that was to ensure that all children would have an opportunity to dream and imagine a better and brighter future and to make that dream a reality. The mark of a true educator is to help shape dreams and help inspire greatness. And Mrs. Hilton met that mark with ease. Mr. Christie, please, that patron Eva Hilton is alive to receive the accolades. Quoting Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, Mrs. Hilton offered the advice to trust the Lord with all your heart, a formula she's proven to lead to success. I advise you, let this become a part of your day-to-day -day living. Breathe it in, soak it in, and you will continue to shine. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. All right, Clint, thanks a lot. Moving on, the new minister responsible for the construction of the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute is not opposed to a public investigation and probe. State Minister for Works and Urban Development, the Honorable Arnold Forbes, says the government has nothing to hide and will not stand in the way of the public finding out about the contracts issued for the facility. Janaya Noel Ferguson tells us tonight that along with the probe is a request by the nation's leader to dig even further. The request for a public hearing into all contracts concerning BAMSI is being positively received by the Minister of State for Works, Arnold Forbes, who maintains that the government has nothing to hide concerning the multi-million dollar North Andros project still under construction. This government is about transparency. It's about putting all the cards on the table. We have nothing to hide in what has gone down at um, uh, BAMSI. And we believe that we'll be vindicated at the end of the day as far as that is concerned. St. Anne's MP Hubert Chipman, who also serves as chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, made the request for the hearing to be publicly televised. Prime Minister Perry Christie, however, charged that the committee should look into all contracts made under the former administration. Chipman says the Prime Minister has no jurisdiction on the probe of the committee. We are dealing with Bamsi and only Bamsi at this particular time. I hear the Prime Minister very often get up in the House of Assembly and said, oh, we are the majority, just ask, we'll, they will give us information have not been forthcoming. Okay. So therefore, we wanted to make it public. And what's wrong with making it public? I think every Bahamian would support that idea. What the government have to hide? The Prime Minister also suggested that there be a review within the ministry. The State Minister of Works agreed. There are some irregular, irregularities that have been noticed. And, you know, we are in the process, the Deputy Prime Minister and myself are in the process of correcting those. And, you know, but, but any, there's a consequence for every action. 
or every inaction, I, I would say. And I believe that the Deputy Prime Minister will address those issues very um, uh, succinctly, outlining what has happened and the actions to be taken and the future stopgap measures that will be put in place to ensure that something like this never happens again. These are things that probably have been happening for a very long time. The, the Deputy Prime Minister will put a stop to it. Meantime, many have recommended for heads to roll because of the Bamsi debacle. Forbes says that that option is also being considered by the Deputy Prime Minister. Now, the Speaker of the House will decide if that hearing will take place and if it will be made public. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. The compendium of bills aimed at expanding the regulatory framework of the credit union industry under the central bank were passed in its entirety in Parliament late Wednesday afternoon. Members of Parliaments for St. Anne's, Pine Ridge, South Beat, East Grand Bahama and Tall Pines all pledged their support. It's all about people helping people. Credit unions, Mr. Speaker, teaches people how to save through salary deductions. These bills are long overdue and will definitely pave the way for further growth of cooperatives in our country. It is their hard-earned money, and we have a right to protect it. There's a common thread running through these compendium of bills before us today, and that is one of transparency, accountability, and effective internal controls to prevent abuse of the system and resources provided by the Bahamian people. Last week's two-day island-wide power outage has not only inconvenienced customers by plunging everyone into darkness, but it also put a strain on resources for the financially strapped Bahamas Electricity Corporation. Crews worked around the clock both at the Blue Hill plant and Clifton Power plant until power was restored on Sunday. BEC's executive chairman, Leslie Miller. The overtime that happened last week was necessary to get those engines running. So we have no problem with overtime in that aspects. And th those things happen and they expect to be happening. With regard to the estimate on the cost, I had indicated that in my opinion it's about five hundred thousand dollars considering the cost of, of, of the equipment that we bought in which was about eighty thousand, considering the overtime. I, I can give you a firm, firm cost on overtime, probably in excess of fifty thousand dollars. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Scatterly. Just days after Commonwealth Bank announced it will not accept funds from online gaming operations, CIBC First Caribbean's Managing Director Marie Rodlin Allen is also taking the same stance a policy that is shared with its Canadian counterparts. Most of the Canadian banks actually have a policy in terms of online gaming, so it's just a prohibited activity from our parent companies. In other business news, members of the National Development Plan Committee traveled to Grand Bahama earlier this week for a series of forums as part of the first phase of their mission. They discussed the objectives of the committee and what type of feedback is needed from residents in order to compile a comprehensive 25-year plan for the country. It is expected the plan will be completed by the end of 2015. And in international news, internet giant Yahoo is closing its China office Office as part of a worldwide consolidation aimed at cutting costs. The Beijing Research Center is Yahoo's only remaining physical presence in the country after it sold its Chinese operations to Alibaba back in 2005. A spokesperson from the company said around 350 jobs would be eliminated. This has been your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Scatterly. Centerville residents are making the most of a six to eight week computer training course held at the Centerville Urban Renewal Center. Officer in charge of the center, Assistant Superintendent of Police Ricardo Richardson says, so many came out that they had, some had to be turned away until a later date. The certification course teaches computer basics and how to use Microsoft Office. The course now into its second week is one of the many offerings held at the center to empower members of that community. This is the first uh, for this year. And you know, we here at the Urban Renewal, we're always trying to find positive things to keep the persons within the community 
busy. You know, uh, in all of this, our backdrop is really crime. And, and we feel that the more positive things that we can find for persons in the community to do to better equip them with the tools that they need uh, when they go into the job place, we feel that it will help us prevent uh, some crime within the community. Instructors say their goal is to ensure that participants will be able to function in a business environment. Instructor Kenton C Tucker and Bernard Richards volunteered their time for the sessions. Residents say it is something others should take advantage of to help advance themselves. We basically came to the Urban Renewal to find out what programs were here. And we spoke with the officer in charge, ASP Richardson, and uh, expressed our desire to help. And thus we came up with this program to teach computers to the community. It's pretty good so far. I encourage all young people. Nothing is coming to you. You have to come and get what you want at this time in life. Age has nothing to do with learning um, technology and a lot of persons need to come now to learn computers because that's the, the way we are going now. The nation's top S-P-E-L-L-E-R-S are gearing up for a competition with a spot at the Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. later this month. Our Jared Higgs got a chance to hang out with the students to see how they're preparing ahead of Sunday's competition. Just watch out because I know I'm going to win. The trash talking started early at this year's Spelling Bee and ensured to be a fierce competition. Some of the spellers were representing their school for the second time, while other spellers like Dana Morrison of St. Thomas More are competing on the national level for the first time. Despite that, she has some experience outside the country. I went away to Florida to do a spelling competition and I won that. The competition was stiff because I went 91 rounds and I ultimately won. The family islands are well represented as well. Makina Aline of Tarpon Bay Primary is representing the Eleuthera District. She says her journey as a speller has been a long one. I started spelling since I was in grade one. And my entire house spelling bees, I used to win all the time. So when I was in grade five, I tried out for the spelling bee, the district spelling bee, but I didn't do so well then. But then in grade six, where I am right now, I, I won this one. So. I came here. And of course, the confidence of the spellers was on display as demonstrated by Sunia Knowles representing Long Island. I think they should try their best, considering they're going against me. Be sure to tune in to ZNS Network on Sunday for full coverage of the event. Jared Higgs, ZNS Network News. A Bahamian mother is celebrating a very special birthday. Ms. Frances Edgecombe, formerly of Sanyard Creek Andrus, turned 107 this week. Ms. Edgecombe spent her days living in Augusta Street, taking care of her many kids. She loves to quote scripture and she still sings hymns today. After a devastating storm rocked the island of Andrus in the 60s, Mama Frances came to Nassau where she worked at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel, among many other places. Well, I came here to look for a little job to wake, we had a little storm. And when the storm was over, it wasn't nothing on the island. Everything was gone. You know, the coconut tree was there, but all was on the ground and bless the Lord. 107. Mama Edgecombe really rocking that hat though. <laughs> she She's sure rocking is. that hat hard. As the spelling bee competition prepares to get underway, students from the family islands have flocked to the capital to test their spelling skills. Alexandria Roll of Fresh Creek Primary is representing North Andrews and the Berry Islands, while Celine Johnson of Sunland Baptist Academy is representing the Grand Bahama District. They both reflected on the competition that got them to Nassau. We had to go North Andrews for the competition, but it was very fun. And we it was, the words was easy, and the competition was easy. For Grand Bahama, I had to study a lot, and when I was on stage, I was really nervous, but um, I, was ex I was excited at the same time. I did it for my school, my old school once, Walter Parker Primary, and I came, um, I was first, but they had to let my alternate go because um, 
I was in the student of the year competition and I wasn't able to compete in the spelling bee.